So that's what I try to avoid when I don't personally, uh, you know, attach people to myself and I don't personally monitor individual people's lives. I don't do that specially because of my own philosophy of ministry. I give everybody freedom. Now, that could be termed to mean that uh, I'm a weak leader or a leader that is not in control. But not that I'm weak, I might not be weak, but I'm surely a leader that, is not, that does not want to control other people's decisions, other people's lives. I just make my own point. I bring my own arguments. I make my own case and I put it out there. But then I don't, uh, I don't, you know, I don't try to push it and I don't try to force people to, you know, to do things my own way. So in this particular case, I think you are mistaken a little bit, uh, Mr. Israel, by thinking that everybody that comes on this platform have come to learn like yourself. You see, we all have the tendency of judging other people, judging other people by ourselves and thinking that other people are like us. But I would like to tell you that most people who come, they, they don't necessarily come here to study, to learn, and to change, and to be transformed. Uh, there are different categories of people who come here. And even if you look into the business world and the Pareto uh, principle, it says that only 20% of people in most organizations, most, most groups, are really ready to implement what they have been taught. 20%, 80% others, they are just crowd. So we should not expect anything less in our own setting as well uh, on this you know, DSA platform. It is a human uh, phenomenon. It is a human occurrence that we have people, most people live by the standard of the flesh and the soul. Most people live by the standard of um, the, you know, convenience and pleasure. They just want to entertain themselves. They are coming for entertainment. And that's why only 20% we should look out for who are really dedicated and will be true disciples. Now, who are the categories of people that I think are coming to this place? First of all, I think a lot of people come here, they don't even know who I am and what I could offer them and who they could become listening to me. So a lot of them come just to affirm themselves. They are listening to me just for me to talk the very same thing they had always believed in. They want, they come here for me to affirm their position. So if I'm not affirming their positions and I'm saying something contrary to their belief and to their belief system, then they drop out very fast or they even become, begin to fight me. And I always said it from the very beginning that a lot of people who are following me right now, who are hailing me and who are crying and shouting Asana, uh, very soon they are going to become my enemies. And the, and the reason is because I've touched something that is dear to them, to their doctrine, because they are here for me to affirm and confirm their doctrines. So once I'm saying something contrary to the, their belief systems, they think that I'm, I'm bad now. So And then the other people who are stay, staying behind and condemning them and saying to them, oh, how could you do, behave like that? You have, you have gone, you have did. They themselves, it's just a matter of time, oh. By, you know, in a little time, you just wait. Half of them will follow them too. Or they will fall for another reason. And the reason also, I mean, the basic reason would be because I've also stepped on their toes. I've done something that they don't like or that they would have done something and they would have done differently in a different way. So I know that people don't know where I'm coming from. They don't have an idea of, the, of the, who they are dealing with. They have only been attracted to me because I'm saying something that suits their ears and that, is, that confirms their positions on some subjects. So they come, but they will soon fall back the same way when I begin to touch things that they are not comfortable with or that uh, steps on their toes and pains them. But the people who will remain are the people who are truly hungry for truth, who are truth seekers and truth lovers. And those are the people that I'm targeting. I'm not targeting the crowd, but I'm targeting the people, the few, that are not just truth seekers, because you could be a truth seeker without being a truth lover. 
So I am after, I'm targeting truth lovers. So I, I recognize that a lot of people are being distracted is because they are coming for entertainment. So the distraction, anything that distracts you is your own desire, is what you came for. They might not add, you might be thinking that they came for DSA stitches or no. It is what they, what they are distracted at, what they are distracted with. That is what is in, within them. Sometimes they themselves might not even be aware that their whole core values, that their mindset, that they, who they are is being revealed by those distractions. Because the, whenever anything happens, like when there are distractions, there are scandals, there are talks, there are rumors, you see, the problem is not just with those people who cause the rumor or that the thing is happening to. The thing, any crisis that comes, comes to reveal something about the, some, somebody that the thing happened to and also about the person who is hearing about it. So let's say, for example, some people, uh, you know, fell off from this platform uh, without mentioning names and they started attacking me. Yes, that crisis, whatever happened, has revealed who they are. But while we are observing them, we, the, the crisis also, as it's revealing who they are, is also revealing who we are. For example, if whatever has happened to them has happened, and you are going there to watch or to comment, to sit down, or to listen, it shows that you yourself, you are not far from them. The next one will be you. I don't see any reason why something, somebody you know that is defaulted and you know is messed in up and you are going to listen again it means you are looking for sensation it just reveals who you are right there so the whole scandal because it's on the negative has revealed who they are but it has also revealed who you are because you are also going there to listen why do what time do you have to go and listen to somebody that you yourself is saying they are in the wrong sometimes when i read the comments and people are saying oh and some people are saying dsa uh, is this dsa they are, they are doing as if they are supporting me. Okay, where are those people who are saying DSA doesn't have a church? Okay, let them come. What, who, you, how did you know they are saying you don't have a church? You went to listen. You have time. If, if you, that's what you came for. You came for sensation. And that's why you are being distracted by even going to find out what they are saying in the first place. You don't have value for your time. You have, you have, you have uh, valued yourself very low. You have not valued yourself high enough. Yeah, because if you have valued yourself high enough, you will say, no, my value is higher than just going to be distracted at something that, does, that will not profit me, that doesn't give me any reward, that is not benefiting me. If you are a truth lover and you know that somebody is in error, wh what is the connection between truth and error? Someone that is in error, you yourself know the person is in error. And why are you going to listen to him? Then you are an error seeker, not truth seeker. Because a lot of people that come to this platform, they came here because they are looking for the errors of geos. They are looking for the errors of other people. You are error seeker, not truth seeker. But if you are a truth seeker, you know that you have found the truth and you are not going to be looking for everything, everybody that is in error and following them and finding, and finding fault and finding out from them what are the newness for they have, found it, they have discovered or found. So... Um, but that's what I say. Anything that happens in this world comes to reveal something about the person that the thing happened to. It also comes to reveal something about us who are hearing about what has happened. Because our response shows, for example, that those things that have happened, you know there are some people on this platform who never went to listen to any of them. Why? Because they know what they are here for. They know that they are truth seekers. They are not error seekers. They are truth seekers. They are not fault finders. So it because they know that the, we came to this platform not to listen to one uh, R or listen to one evangelist. We came here for to listen to DSA. He's the one who brought us here. Okay, so he's still here. Eh? If he's still here, we are listening. But you came here, you met one uh, Jack and Jerry, and you tell say, Jack, Jack has gone. Where is Jack? Let me go and look for Jack. And that's who you are. You are just a commuter in the street. You are just like a market woman. Ah, where is, is, is now Jerry that has disappeared? What's happening to Jerry? Uh, let me go and listen to what he's saying. Jerry has gone mad. Has he gone mad? Okay, let's go and listen to what Jerry has to say with the, the madness in the market. Ah, uh, he's Jack that have, they are putting in psychiatric hospital. So why is Jack now? What is this? What kind of song is Jack singing? That is, it is because you are, a, and then you, are, you are looking for entertainment. You are somebody that is looking to be entertained. You are not somebody that is a truth seeker 
or a truth lover. So we you, you shouldn't be surprised at this kind of uh, re, uh, re reactions and at this kind of uh, distractions that you see in people. It's it, it, the thing that is coming that they are laughing at is revealing who they are. It's not revealing. You know, it's revealing that they are not really as strong as they thought. They are not really as real as they think. They are not really as truth lovers as they are thinking about themselves. They are thinking, I'm better than the arrow. I'm better than the evangelist so, because I'm still here. They don't know that something will happen because they are fault finders or fault seekers or people who want to go and listen to interesting things. Sometimes somebody, will, you will get to the point that somebody will tell you the thing interesting until you fall off yourself. So, but if you are a truth lover, if you are a truth seeker, you don't even you are not you are not even aware those things are happening. So that is what uh, is important for us to know. You know, some of us we don't know ourselves. There are three kind of responses we all have in life. Three categories by responses. You know, there are different ways you can categorize people, but in this case, I'm talking about categories of people by re by uh, by attitude. So, number one category of people is the, is the category of people that respond to rumors. Their own thing is just to talk about what has happened. Did you hear that has happened? Did you hear somebody did this? Did you hear? That is how they get their own energy. That is how they get their own fuel. They, are, they just get energy and, you know, to, just by talk, gossiping. It's called gossipers. You know, but they don't call themselves gossiper, but they are only looking for what has happened. Did you hear somebody that somebody slept with some other person? Did you hear that one has divorced? Did you hear what this one is? This one is now dating that one. Did you hear that one has a baby mama or mama baby? You know, mama, whatever they call it. Uh, uh, baby mama, baby daddy. You know, they, you know, go and look for, do you know who this one is dating? Do you know that one has happened? Do you hear? Those, that is the lowest category of people in the world. That is the lowest category of people in the world. They are the failures. Failures are people who live by rumors and talk of what happened to all other people. They, they are just crowd. They are the ones who just accompany other people to the market. They are not going to the market to sell and they are not going to the market to buy. They are just going around to look, to hear what are the movements going on in the market. They are they are ear shoppers, eye shop. What do you call those eye glass shoppers or what they come? Eye shoppers, uh, window shoppers. These ones are not window shoppers. They are eyes shoppers and ear shoppers. They are the lowest of humankind. They are the kind of people that are interested that that what gives them energy, what excites them is that. Did you hear this happen? Did you hear that one did that? That is the lowest category of people. They are the failures in life. They are the losers of life. People who just want to carry and hear latest news and talk about it. They are the gossipers. But even though they, do, they might not acknowledge themselves as such. The second level of people, the second category of people by reaction and by response in life are people who live and respond to problems. So who are these people who respond to problems? They are people who, the only thing that, is, that gets, their, gets their attention are problems. Not positive or negative problem. Oh, oh, my wife. Oh, oh my wife is not coming back. Oh, my husband. My husband is uh, yeah, he's late today. Oh, where have you gone to? They are all looking to find him problem everywhere. Oh, my son. Oh, are you okay? Have you eaten? They are just problem driven. That is better and higher a little bit than the one that is people, other people's driven. Because the ones that are problem driven, at least they are concerned about, the, they know their own priorities, they know their problem thing, that they value thing, that they are not they are important to them. They are not putting their nose and living the life of other people. They are not living the life of gossip, they are not living the life of, you know, what has happened to other people and let's talk about other people. At least they are concerned about their own problems. Things that happen to them, they are panicking. Oh, my wife, my husband, my children, my, you know, walk, oh, I hope they will not trace me. At least they are living by, they are, but it's, the low, it's a bit lower than the other, the losers. They are the mediocres in life. So they don't become anything great. They are just mediocres. They are just, you know, they are always, always worried about something. There is always some problem that is always making them to panic. They are running from one church to the other. 
there to resolve their problems, but at least they don't have time for the magazines and the gossips and the cosmo cosmopolitan magazine, Natalie magazine, and all kind of gossip like that. No, they are just concerned about problems, resolving their problems. Everything is a problem. They are going to pray. They are going to fast. They are going to, but they are not putting nose in. They are much more be be better than the losers. But these are the mediocres. But the, the, peop, the person, the category of people that we need to belong to and who we need to be is to become um, visionaries. Visionaries. People who are living for a goal and purpose. People who are goal-driven. That is the last category, the third category of people. They are goal-driven in life. They have a goal. They have a purpose. Everything that is, it's not rumors that is driving them. They are not rumors driven. They are goals driven. They are not problem driven. They are goals driven. That's why I wrote that book. If, you know, a visionless life is a meaningless life. All those other group of people, they are visionless. So their life is meaningless. But this category of people, they are the visionaries and the visionaries. They only are driven by goals. Vision driven, goal driven, mission driven. And that's where we must belong. Thank you very much, DSA. I'm so I'm so blessed with your response. And I want to also tell you that the the first time I'm hearing this um different kind of leadership style is just today. Uh maybe I should let you know as I said earlier in the beginning of this program that Thirty two years you are left Nigeria, so you must have totally lost contact. The definition of leadership in Nigeria as it were is when the when your leader tells you to do a thing, he forces you to obey it. And then if you don't obey it, you simply mean you are not a follower. No leader gives their followers freedom to choose and to decide on their own. And then you just, you just, you just, you just make it simple. You only present what is right and allow everyone to choose what they think they want to do. And that will make me to say to you that welcome DSA to Nigeria. <laughs> you come home to meet set of people who have, who have experienced Many of them, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years of their life, under the kind of leadership, and not only give instructions, but the proof that you are a true follower is that you follow everything your leader says without questioning it. You are coming to meet them. Yeah, but the, the other hand of or the other hand is that the leader is telling their members every details what should they should do or what they shouldn't do, right? Yes. Go he's ahead. Telling their, he's telling their members how to live, how he think that, I mean if if he tells you that this is how life is supposed to look like and you are saying no, I think the better way is this. If it go other way. You are no longer a disciple. The definition of discipleship in Nigeria is this. What my papa said, I stick and I obey it even when I think I have contrary opinion. So and, and I'm saying to her that you are coming to meet that set of people in Nigeria. You are also coming to meet set of people who does not accept responsibility for their own thoughts, rather looking for someone they are going to push it to. And when you tell them they are, they are 40, they come up from you, they let you know you cannot tell them. That's why they say, tell them, don't tell me. They want you to keep on telling them they are the one that has 40. They want to keep on doing a program. If your program about syncretisms, um, idol smashers, uh, cleaning the temple has been continued, exposing B, um, uh, GOs, they will be catching fun with it. They will have been catching fun with it because you are now saying what they want to hear and then why now the table turn around and they are the, the message is now telling them you yourself check your life it's not becoming no you shouldn't tell me you should tell you should tell them so now dear say i want to tell you 
the chunk number of people, or let me even say, which is very significant enough, 99% of people that you are coming to meet in Nigeria have the state of they, 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 they have this state of mind. This state of mind that does not accept responsibility and that are used to kind of leadership would dictate what followership is and what you must do, you must obey. Any attempt to disobey it means you are not loyal. I do you intend to break this culture. No, I don't. Knowing, I, don't I, 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 I don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. Knowing, sir, is a lifestyle of a long time. We are, I shift blame on others, not on me. One. Secondly, I am used to leaders that also welcome my own opinion. And this time, when you come and tell them what I think is right, and you let them, now let me make it clear, yes, if you get it when I make that particular point clearer, you will tell them what is right and leave them to choose. Um, our processing mind, our mind of processing information is very dead. So we don't process to reason. If you leave them to choose, we keep on choosing wrong, wrong ways, wrong ways. That's why most leaders here insist that they must choose the one they give to them. So you are coming to introduce a new dimension of leadership. What is the method? What is, how do you intend to change this culture? Okay, and let me continue, first of all, with the first uh, question that you have said. I've told you about three categories of people in terms of responses or attitude. In terms of responses and attitude, let, let me go show you and give you another category, another three groups of people in terms of living, in terms of actions. How there are three groups of people also in terms of <clears throat> how they live their lives. So who are these category, who are these three groups of people? All of us, we are divided into one of the three groups of people. And that is why what will make you to understand why my response might not be exactly the kind of response that you expected about these people who are coming to my platform and are getting distracted. <clears throat> I know better. I know something about life. And what I know about life doesn't make these things to surprise me. And doesn't make me to be discouraged or think that there is nothing unusual, that is, there is something unusual that is happening. It is normal. You must know that in, in life, all of us, we look like human beings, all right? We all look like one another. We all, we, we are men or women. We all look with the dress, we look, speak English, or we speak uh, some languages, and we dress up, we look like normal human beings, but we are not all normal human beings. Most of us are not human beings at all. They are still living the animal level of life. Even though they are, we are all on the same uh, pay on the same platform here, you know, commenting and saying things, but we are not all the same. So what are these three categories of people that I'm talking about? Number one, the, 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 number, the top, number, number one, I, I started from the least that time, now I'm going to start from the top. There are three groups of people as well. Number one group of people, the ones that we should be, are history makers. There are only few of them, 3% of them, who are history makers in the world. So if they come on my platform and I'm seeing masses and biomasses, why should I be surprised? That is what we have all around us. Only 3% of people are history makers. And what are the history makers? They, they are the go-getters. They, the go they are the movers and the shakers. They are the history makers. They are more interested in making history than getting entertained. They are more interested in changing their world, in leaving their mark in history, than, than just going with the crowd. So that is the number one category of people that we have, that, you know, there are not too many of them. So I'm not looking, you know, the, you know what I feel? I feel that the real people that I'm looking for are not the ones who are commenting every day, are not the ones who are on live broadcast even. I think that the history makers, either they don't comment at all, or they don't even come on live. The, for me, the kind of people that I'm looking for are not the people who are listening to me live or who are commenting. The ones that I'm looking for who are the history makers because I know how they behave is, are the ones who will lock up themselves with the YouTube series 
and who will maybe they will come live and listen, but they, they are not sacrifice, they are not satisfied with those. We, they, that is not their main you know, place of gaining knowledge. It's not just doing the live broadcast or when they are commenting. But even if they are doing that, they are commenting and they are live, they still go and find time on their own, three, four, five hours every day when nobody is seeing them, only their family members. When nobody, they are not commenting to anywhere, they are having their notebooks, they are having their, their conspects, or the, what do I call it, their, that's Russian. They are notes, they are notebooks, and they are writing notes. They are listening, they are, they are doing as if they are studying. Those are the people that I know that are my disciples. Even though I don't know them, I might not know their name, I might not have ever heard of them. But wherever they are doing that, it is for their sake that I'm doing what I'm doing. The second way I would I personally recognize the people that I know is not that they are their presence every day. Oh, where is this brother? Where is this brother? Who comment? Who co don't comment? No. And, uh, the ones that I know to be in this category of people, the history makers, are the ones who join the mentorship group. And not just join the mentorship group just to put your mark there, just to say I came. No. The ones who are giving exams, who are working hard and who are not, you know, who are repeating, who are doing their best. That is how you know the disciples. Not the ones who are coming on daily broadcast, though. not the ones who are coming to make comments or to make to come and shout on Facebook. No, 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 no. The ones who are really studying hard in mentorship group, those are the ones that you are you you know who are the history makers and the shakers, the movers and shakers in the future. They are because they are coming for change. They are coming for transformation of themselves so that they will become transform for they will be able to transform other people as well. They are coming to learn to seek after the truth. That's why they have to sit down and work hard. So that, that's why I'm not complaining about but the other people will be will be playing with sand like children. You know, when you go to a compound, we have many children in the house. They are so most of the children, what would they be doing? They'll be going around the compound to play with the sound and uh, the grass and uh, they'll be running after the lizard and uh, ants and chicken and things like that. But the ones, the children that will become great in life, you see them back in the room studying, reading, doing homeworks. The same thing up to now. So that's the first category of people that, you know, so, and I know that those kind of people, they are not all, all everywhere shouting and you know, screaming. I know they are there. So that is the, ca first the first category of people. But the second category of people that will come on this platform are the critics. They are just coming to find faults. So it's normal to accept critics. I have a whole book I've, I've not read, I've not translated it to English. You know, how to, uh, how to accept criticism, how to correctly criticize. I have two books on criticism. So, uh, but these are critics, not constructive critics, but destructive critics. People who are just coming to find fault, fault finders. That is the category of people, that is the second category of people in life. Anything, no matter what you do, you are finding fault. Either they are finding fault with your teaching, or they are finding fault that you didn't use the Bible, or they are finding fault that you didn't code, you didn't pray in the beginning, or they are finding fault that your wife is not sitting with you, or they are finding fault that uh, you know you are not in church, you are in the studio. They will find fault. So when you now see those find faults, that is a category of life. Why should you be surprised, or why should you be running after them to go and listen to them? It's because you are not informed yourself. So if you, if you see the second category of people who are coming to find fault and you are chasing after them, hey, I'm going to chase you. By the time you chase them, you don't know your way back again. You have chased, chased them into the forest and you have lost direction. They have they are lost in one direction, you are lost in another direction. You are now trying to come back home, you can't find a way anymore. Because you must know that it is normal to have critics in life. Even Jesus acknowledged this when he said, you know, woe unto you if everybody will be saying good things about you only. And when they came to him and said, good master, he said, no, no nobody is good. Don't, don't expect, I don't expect you to be coming to sing for me that I'm just good alone. There are people like that. That is their own calling. They are critics. They are fault finders. That's the second category of people you must know that we have in this world. Then the third category of people you remember, this is in response to life, right? 
This is in their position of life. How they, uh, they it is not in their attitude, in their response. The first one was in about the attitude and response, but this one is just about position of life. So the third category of people that we have are entertained, uh, the ones who want to be entertained. Observers, we call them. They want to, they're just observing history. They are just, they just want to be entertained. They just, they are just, they are where things are happening. <laughs> they want to be exuberant. They want to be, some, somebody else must do. They want the makers, and the, the history makers, the movers and shakers to be doing something while they are just, it's just like when you go to the stadium. They are the ones you find. The people who are acting on the stadium, they are just 22, 11 on one side, 11 on the other side. But there will be 90,000 people in that stadium. So what are they doing there? They are the observers. They are the people who want to be entertained. That is what all life is about. If you go to somebody, somebody will be telling you a story. Oh, you know, we have no Hollywood at home. We know we have no Are you playing there? No. Are you directing? No. Are you writing something? No. Are you making money from Hollywood? No. So you are coming, going about bragging about it. You are sitting down to watch it. That is who you are. That is 80% 80, 80, 80 of people are like that. They want to be entertained. They want to just. So, so why you are not, why Nollywood or, you know, is not bringing money to your table, is not feeding your children, you are not having jobs, they are not paying you any money. What are you losing your, why are you spending two, three hours just to talk or watch what they are doing? Go and create your own thing. That will bring money to your table. That will make other people to, uh, to, to applaud you. So these are just crowd. These are fans and audiences that are just there to just because they are looking for entertainment. Something must do. Somebody must do something for them to respond and be happy. Why are you not the one that is doing the thing? You know, some a lot of people they must watch TV. To me, it's an embarrassment. Why should I be the one sitting down to watch you? Why am I worse than yourself? Why is it not you sitting down to watch me? That's why I don't watch serial, series. That's why I don't watch Nollywood. I don't watch movie. It's an, it's an assault on my intelligence. And you are just playing and doing things that are fictitious, that are not real. Stories. You are sitting down to, and I have to use my own time, my own life, to just be sitting down to watch you and you are getting money for it and I'm not getting money for it. You have reduced me. That, but that is unfortunately how most people are. They are here to be observers of life, of other people's lives, of history that other people are making. Not their own history. They are not making any history. They are just observing history. 